Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So my collabs have kind of slowed down, which I am not mad about because when you're uploading and filming every day in December, it gets really hectic. But before the end of the month, I did have one more trick up my sleeve. And this is a collab with basically her Instagram handle is bad to the brow. But her name is Millie, and she actually designs Amy Loves Makeup's merch, which is how I think I ended up following her account. And we've talked a bunch of times on Instagram, and then one day it was one of those like Instagram templates, and she had tagged me as a YouTuber she would want to collab with, which is a spectacular honor because if you go and check out her Instagram, and her YouTube channel, which I will link in my description box, you will realize what a talented unicorn of a human being Millie is. Oh my gosh, her Instagram is just full of stunning eyeshadow looks and she's so good. And she did like these amazing Halloween looks with multi-chromes. I was so blown away by her. Like she is definitely one of those channels that deserves way more attention and I hope that some of you will go over to her channel and check her out and leave her some love because we all enjoy seeing new people come to our channel and check out our work. Honestly, anyone on YouTube and Instagram, it's just so fun when you can make new friends and see new subscribers enjoying what you are creating online. So it's such a good feeling and I'm so happy to be doing this collaboration. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. So basically me and Millie decided it would be fun to basically talk about our most favorite palette from a brand and our least favorite palette from a brand. So we picked out five brands that we both have products in and decided that this would be something fun to do. So if you guys are looking for video ideas, I think this is kind of a fun one. I definitely think it's been done before, but I haven't seen it done in a while. And so here we are. And without further blabbering, my first brand that I'm going to talk about is ABH. So my least favorite brand from ABH is the Riviera palette. And this came out in the summer of 2019. And I feel like it was one of those palettes that I got really excited about because ABH doesn't really do color like this in their palettes. And I was so excited for it and I picked it up and I used it a couple of times, but since using it, I was not really impressed with the formula and I was just kind of like, eh, yeah, it's my least favorite. Like if I look at all my ABH palettes on the shelf, I feel like this is the one that if I, you know, lost it in a fire, I wouldn't attempt to repurchase this. So for those reasons, this is my least favorite ABH palette. My most favorite ABH palette, I wanted to pick this one kind of as a fun um, topic of discussion, but this is the Subculture palette, and I am so into these shades right now. Like, realistically, if you had me pick my most used ABH palette, it would probably be Modern Renaissance or Soft Glam, but as far as, like, my favorite palette, it's this guy, because I'm so into those grungy tones right now, and I feel like this palette is honestly a pioneer. It was before its time. They tried to change up the formula and do, like, a pigment formula, and it did not go well for ABH, so they basically discontinued it, I think, in that formula and reformulated it from what we can tell. According to Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, she grabbed this from like a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx and told everyone on the internet that this formula was much better and I trust her, so I went and bought one for myself and tried it out and she is right, this formula is fantastic. So the redone version, is amazing. I don't know if you can buy this anymore, so I do apologize if you can't, but if you see it at a store, I would honestly grab it. I think people were finding these for like 10 bucks because they're like 20 bucks and then they went on clearance. So hopefully you guys, if you see this, grab it. I know now the Riviera is in TJ Maxx because many people ask me if I recommend this palette. So Hopefully I answered your question. I don't really think the Riviera is worth it. Even if you get it for 20 bucks, I really don't think you should because it's gonna make you question Anastasia's quality, which I think does not need to be questioned. I think that palette was just questionable. So next let's talk about ColourPop. So my least favorite 
ColourPop palette so far has been this guy. This is the Bye Bye Birdie palette. They came out with not very long ago. It's in its box because I'm actually trying to sell this one on Poshmark. And I was just so unimpressed by this palette. I don't know what possessed me to buy it, but it's got two pressed glitters in it as well as some super shock shades and I don't know I feel like this is one of those palettes that looks like every other Colourpop palette and I just was like probably having a bad day at work and I picked it up and the eye look I did with it was just okay it's not anything special really so for those reasons I'm putting it in my least favorite Colourpop category realistically I could probably sit here and film a whole video about my least favorite and most favorite Colourpop palettes but that one is, it's definitely down there because I don't usually turn my palettes around that fast but I used it and I didn't like it so I'm like get it out of here like I don't need it it's in my declutter bin it's on my Poshmark I'm ready for it to be gone. So my most loved ColourPop palette, this one is a tough one because I really like the, what is the neutral one called? It's like, I think I love you or like you or something. That palette is bomb. I do own the Kathleen Light So Jada palette and I hadn't really dipped into it, but I've started like dabbling in it and that one's been a really fun palette to play with. But I did realize as I was getting into the So Jada palette that my favorite shades from the So Jaded palette were already in the Good Sport palette. And this palette rocked 2018's socks off. This was in my favorites. And I still really, really love this color story. Again, I'm just so into those grungy greens. So the Chartreuse shade and this shade really like tickle my pickle. And this like yellow. Oh my gosh. This palette is like chef's kiss it's so good if i had to pick a runner up for my favorite ColourPop palette i would pick the whatever palette which came out in 2019 it's neutral af but it's honestly like one of the best neutral palettes ColourPop's come out with especially for my skin tone and deeper skin tones i think it would work as a really nice everyday neutral palette and i love the packaging on that one as well so the next brand we decided to talk about is huda and my least favorite product from huda is this eyeshadow palette oh my gosh I I struggle with this this one was in my video with Amy the one that we did call products that made us feel like a clown because we just bought them right away and this was one that when I saw these announced I was like shut the fuck up like are you serious like they were so stunning and I was just like holy crap like give it to me there was like a neon green shade like look at these colors and like they don't even swatch good but I swear at the time like these were like revolutionary colors and I was just so excited and the excitement faded so quickly once I started playing with these in a first impressions video because um, my goal was to get that filmed and uploaded really quickly to YouTube just so I could like capitalize on having it being a new product and stuff like that but it was such a mess and yeah I definitely <laughs> Definitely feel like if you're trying out Huda Beauty, don't start with these palettes. I actually have the orange one too and I miss the return window so I'm stuck with them now. But I want to play with them on my channel maybe one more time and then they are headed to Poshmark to be very honest with you guys. One of my favorite Huda palettes or my favorite Huda palette is this guy. This is the Huda Beauty Desert Dust Palette and again this is such a gorgeous palette. It has all those perfect neutral shades. Like, remember when this, like, berry orange color story was so, so in? And I just feel like this is the palette that made me fall in love with Huda. Because the original, the rose gold palette she came out with, which has now been reformulated and I think reformulated for the better. After that one came this one. And the, the original of that was so, mm, and the price point was so high that I was just like, oh. Fuck you, Huda, but she redeemed herself with this palette, and I just think this is so beautiful, and I love that she's stuck to that aesthetic of doing the eyes. I think that's really cool. I don't think it's creepy at all. I know some people don't love that packaging, but I think it is wonderful, to be honest with you guys. And then the next brand we decided to talk about is Melt Cosmetics, and I don't have my least favorite palette from Melt with me because I ended up returning it, but it is the 27 palette. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, I've mentioned a few times how I was so iffy about Melt because they have this formula that was so unstable at one point that 
their shadows would literally shatter into a million pieces as you tried to get the palette open. So that happened to me twice with the 27 palette because they sent me the first one. It was completely shattered and then the second one was completely shattered. I was so frustrated. I was like, please stop sending me replacements. I just want my money back. I sent the palette back and I did get a refund. I was a little bit salty though because they made me pay to ship the palette back because they would have rather kept sending me new palettes, which is mildly irritating to be honest, but whatever. It's all behind me now and I don't know. I think that they have done better with their formula. They've like updated it so it's not as crumbly, but oh my goodness. I'm like so... I was so like anxious about Melt's formula because of that reason. Now my favorite Melt palette is a newer one by them and it is the Morte palette. Now I really love the Smoke Sessions palette as well because of that all green color scheme. Like those shades just like speak to my soul. But as far as being unique and fun and different, I would have to pick the Morte palette. These palettes are definitely like the hit of 2019. So many people are putting this in their 2019 favorites video and I don't blame them because they are that good. And I'm just so impressed with this palette and the color scheme and the work that probably went into creating that collection. So that is my most favorite palette from Mel Cosmetics. And then last but certainly not least is our final brand which is Natasha Denona and my least favorite my least favorite palette from Natasha Denona is definitely my most hated palette from all of these for two reasons. The price I paid for it and the color story. This is the Natasha Denona Star Palette and for the longest time this is one of the more like bigger palettes that were like more affordable and it was like very coveted by so so many people and I swear her newer palettes are so much better than this but I still felt the need to pick this up during the Sephora sale in April so I bought it and then it just sat there so I missed the return window on this one too and then I started including it in my try and buy series that I'm filming on my channel and I've used this palette a few times and Compared to my most favorite palette from Milk Cosmetics, like this one is such a downer. I know I'm gonna sell this on my Poshmark as soon as I've like made peace with the fact that I spent way too much money on this palette. But I feel like, you know, Natasha Denona is one of those brands that has gotten better with time. It's like, you know how they say like, um, wine when it ages, it's like better, like, fine like wine. Yeah, like this, ooh, no, but, but, my favorite Natasha Denona palette, which is the Metropolis palette, which I don't think any of you would be surprised about me loving this palette. Now, my runner-up palette for my favorite Natasha Denona palette would definitely be the gold palette. I think still color story-wise, the gold palette wins because it's such a unique, fun color story. But as far as like variety, colors, and formula, this one wins for me every time. Honestly, if I lost all of my eyeshadow palettes, I would be okay as long as I could repurchase this one because this is like my soul currently is like beating and bleeding these colors like this green, this olive green, like ah, oh, it's so stunning. I want to do more looks with this. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. I know this is technically like an older palette now, but it's so gorgeous and I love it so, so much. So that is my number one favorite eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona. So guys, that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed this concept. And I had so much fun picking out my favorite palettes and least favorite palettes from some of my favorite brands. So Millie is gonna be uploading the same video. She's gonna be talking about the same brands, but who knows, maybe we'll have completely different favorites and least favorites. I think that would be very interesting to see what she picked as her favorite and least favorite because we did decide on these brands, on these five brands to talk about them. So yeah, let me know what you guys think your favorite and least favorite from these brands are. I would love to hear your answers. Definitely go over to Millie and check out her channel. And if you are coming from her channel, welcome. My name is Karen and we have lots of fun here. So definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos that I'll link at the end here. I also have a Vlogmas giveaway going on. It is in my description box and that ends tomorrow at midnight. So feel free to check that out as well. I will catch you guys in my next video tomorrow. Thank you guys. Bye!